Fourth, we can all agree in principle the UN is the right body to decide issues of international policy, including the justification for the use of force. But the reality is the UN is gridlocked effectively with Russia and USA regularly on different sides on similar issues. How can the UN be reformed? How can a clearer set of rules be agreed with a greater measure of objectivity? Fifth, we must understand the true nature of the threat we face. It is Islamist extremism and its ideology. And we need urgently to put in place a unified, comprehensive strategy to defeat it. This should be a combination of hard and soft power, including a global commitment and education to reform education systems, the encouragement of modern-minded and reformist clerics within Islam, and an effective countering of the propaganda of the extremists. And then we need an honest debate in the West about our own values and level of commitment to them. The West has a big decision to take. Does it believe it is a strategic interest in the outcome of the struggle in the Middle East and elsewhere around these issues of Islamist extremism? And if so, what level of commitment is it prepared to make to shape the outcome? My view is obviously that it does have such an interest and should make the necessary commitment. So in conclusion, many will find it impossible to reconcile themselves to the decision to remove Saddam or my motives in taking it. But it is vital we do not continue to allow controversy over Iraq to obscure what are real contemporary threats to world security, which reflect absolutely the difficulties we actually encountered in Iraq. This extremism menaces so many nations, those who were with us in Iraq and those who opposed Iraq, those of an aggressive foreign policy and those who have a Pacific one, developed and developing nations, North and South, wealthy and poor. This is the scourge of our time. It's the challenge of our generation. It requires us to act bravely, even when imperfectly. At some point, we will reach for and achieve the unified, comprehensive foreign and defense policy that can defeat it. Iraq will be a chapter in this struggle and an important one. But it wasn't the first and it won't be the last. I want to thank Sir John and his team for the report, for the time and care it has taken. I also want this day to pay tribute to Sir Martin Gilbert, who so tragically passed away before the report was concluded. We can't make decisions with the benefit of hindsight, but we can and we should learn from our experience and from the mistakes that were made. I hope future leaders can learn from those that I made so that our determination in confronting terrorism and violence is not less, but our ability to do so effectively is much greater. The decisions I made, I have carried with me for 13 years and will do so for the rest of my days. There will not be a day of my life where I do not relive and rethink what happened. People sometimes ask me why I spend so much time in the Middle East today. This is why. It's why I work on Middle East peace, on the dialogue between faiths, on how we confront young people growing up with hatred in their hearts towards those who look, think, or believe differently from them. It's my belief that if we learn the right lessons today, if we do, the next generation will see the dawn of a lasting peace in the place where all this began and where it must finally end, which is the Middle East. <laughs>